All right, welcome to the Break Orders podcast. Got a special hey. guest here, John Shear. How you doing? Doing pretty well. Uh, just got off a Zoom call with Nick Bosa, Elijah Mitchell, um, D'Amico Ryans, and Mike McDaniel, and a couple other 49ers. Uh, Elijah Mitchell was pretty cool. Got to speak with him. George Kittle, too. I forgot. How can it fit? George Kittle, too. I mean, George Kittle's like the nicest guy in the world. Uh, he's he's so cool. So um, it was pretty cool. It's the name George. That's why we're nice. All the Georges. <laughs> nice. So what can I say? <laughs> All right. So, so John, he's a freelance writer for Fox Sports. He also has his on-air host, DB&A Television. He's a writer. He's the co-founder of, of uh, Sideline Sports, which is active, really active yep. now. And yep. uh, uh, he's a Perch Sports Talk co-owner. Started in 2015. <laughs> Seems like a while back. Yeah. Yeah, I've been in this business for almost seven years now. So, um, yeah. I mean, Perch Sports was how I got my start. Um, we, My friend and I were on the way home from an Orioles game, doubleheader. And we both kind of like came up with the idea at the same time of starting podcasts. And this was before podcasts became, you know, because before they blew up and uh, pod perch sports isn't a thing anymore, but that did help teach me a lot of things. I, I self-taught, I taught myself a lot of things, learned a lot of things in perch sports, you know, won awards and things like that. And uh, eventually moved on from that and, Sideline Sports is about a year and a half old now, and in our year and a half, uh, we were on, we had a contract with an Atlanta radio station on DBNA Television, on Quantum Star Television, which is a twenty four seven on demand channel through Roku, um, which we will have our own show on there, Sideline Sports, and uh, we covered the Super Bowl last year. Um, I was the first person to talk to Chris Godwin after the Super Bowl. First person to talk to. Harrison Bucker. Um, so uh, we've just achieved quite a bit of things. I was at the Hall of Fame. I covered the, the Hall of Fame for Football Hall of Fame in August. That entire week, talked to a lot of great Hall of Famers, hung out with like Calvin Johnson and all those guys that were getting ready for their jackets that Friday night, hung out with them backstage. So, um, you know, done, done a little bit of everything in this business. So, you know, just trying to just trying to make it, you know. Yes, for sure. Do you want to tell me about yourself, like where you grew up, things like that? Yeah, I'm a PA guy. Um, grew up, uh, you know, just a small town PA guy. Love sports. That's that's my thing. As you can see, I'm a you know Carolina Hurricanes fan. If you're familiar with hockey, I'm a Canes fan. Been been a Canes fan forever. You know, Dolphins fan in, in football. Miami Heat. Baltimore Orioles, like those are my teams, Florida Gators, that's my college team. So those are my, those are my loves. Besides my wife and kids, those are my loves, you know, that's my right. team. So, you know, fi former firefighter, you know, former post, you know, postman, you know, with the postal service. So I've just kind of, you know, done everything, worked in uh, social work with individuals who have autism, worked with them for almost seven years. So I've done a little bit of everything, but I found my niche. I'm here, here to stay. I love being in the media. It's my thing. And uh, I'll talk all day with you about sports, especially football, but talk anything with you. Nice, man. So what's up. You're all over the place, though. Baltimore Orioles it's in Baltimore, Carolina, Hurricanes in Carolina. You got the yep. two, two Florida teams, the Dolphins. The Heat and the, the Gators, too, for college, man. That's a, that's a mix. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a unique guy. I'm a, I'm a very different cat. All right. So let's go. Since you mentioned 49ers, they're your guys. Let's talk about them first. Talk about the yeah. 49ers Packers. Let's get your thoughts on that game. Yeah. Um, so this was an interesting one because of the elements. I as I said on my show the other night, I said, I think if this thing was played in LA or San, you know, somewhere where there's neutral weather, like I don't think San Fran beats the Packers, but they overcame the elements and the special teams was the reason that they won. Um, as you saw the first drive when the elements weren't a factor, Devontae Adams was a factor. And when the elements got bad, Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon got hurt 
and that killed the Packers because when the elements get bad, you've got to run the ball. And they couldn't run the ball. They had to go to their third string at times. Well, AJ, well, Aaron Jones fluctuated. You know, he came in and out of the lineup because he was banged up. AJ Dillon left and never came back. So I, I just don't like the Niners is a great story. They've had the Rams number. They have the Packers number. But I just don't buy this Niners team. Like they, if it wasn't for the 49er or the Rams meltdown, when they came back and beat the Rams, they're not in the playoffs. We're talking about the Saints in the playoffs. So, like, you know, I mean, I don't necessarily buy this team. And it's a hot take. I'm on it. Sure. What's that? The hot take, man. Look, I, I think, I think the Rams end up up by three scores. I think they're up by 17 when we hit the fourth quarter, and I don't think they relinquish the lead this time. It's, they learn from the Bucks game. They learn from the last time they played the Niners. They are superior in talent and quarterback wise. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo has done nothing. And so he's going to have to bring them back. And I just, I think Jalen Ramsey and that, them defensive backs, I think they're going to feast. McDonald's going to feast, Von Miller. And uh, I just don't think the night, I think this is the end of this magical run that the Niners have. The Rams are superior in talent, clear. All right, let's get. Let me give you my take here. Obviously, cold weather, Aaron Rodgers. It's like Dan Marino, even though Dan Marino never won, Aaron Rodgers won a championship. Feels like he can never, never get it done. He can never, he can never make it done. He can't get the big game. He always loses in big games. It's like his second year in a row. He lost the playoff game at home. Very disappointing. Yep. He can never get it done. It's always in his hands, the palm of his hands in every game. A lot of three and outs. A lot of he got the black punt that was big right there. The black punt and the Packers didn't know where the ball was. They got the ball. They scored. Uh, that was a big turning point. And another turning point was it was like at the end it was trying to get to halftime, and they wanted to get the field goal. That would have been crucial. Ten nothing, you know, yep. two scores, and they blocked the field goal. So really good point on the special teams with the 49ers. Really helped them out there. Uh, you know, taking care of the ball, blocking the ball, and just putting pressure on the on, the, on Aaron Rodgers and 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 the and the special teams getting blocking uh, extra, the field goal. I've never seen that like a long time. And the punt it was it was crazy, for sure. Yeah, and I uh, I wrote up some stats about Aaron Rodgers and uh, going back to after he won the Super Bowl, post Super Bowl. In the fourth quarter, with five minutes or less in playoff games since then, when the score is tied or they're trailing, Packers, Aaron Rodgers is trailing, um, he has about a 54 completion percentage. He has about three touchdowns and two interceptions. So he hasn't been very good when they're trailing or tied. That's also counting the overtime games when tied or trailing. So since he won that Super Bowl, Whenever he has to have it, when it's at least tied or he's losing, he doesn't come up clutch. He's not been very good. So it's not a knock against Aaron Rodgers. It's just, it's like Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, awesome regular season quarterback. Don't get me wrong. But regular, but the postseason, look at his numbers. He's not very good win loss wise. Like he just, maybe part of that's Tom Brady, but he's just not very good in the postseason and some quarterbacks are some quarterbacks aren't but I think that takes away from Aaron Rodgers credibility whenever it comes to being the best or being one of the best I think that takes away from part of his resume for sure let's go to the other side of the game this is my friend Greg's favorite team He's saying gone all the way Cincinnati Bengals his favorite team it's, it's not his favorite team but this is what we said in our uh, and our predictions, John, before you yeah. came on, he said Bengals all the way. Couldn't make it today. Big, big frat uh, party for him. So he couldn't, couldn't come today. But uh, what do you think about the Bengals game? I, I, clearly, this is like the Rams Niners. It's been a nice story for the Bengals. You know, it's, what they're doing is great. The only thing that concerns me with the Chiefs, and it concerned me last week, it concerned me the last time they played the Bengals. They can't tackle. They they're back into their secondary is, a, is an issue. They can't tackle Jamar Chase. They couldn't stop Gabriel Davis. 
they have a problem on the back end of that defense. Now, a big pro- now a big part of that was Tyron Matthew did not play against the Bills because he left early, never came back with a head injury, concussion. But even if he plays, which he did play against the Bengals the last time, they had no answer for Jamar Chase. They had no answer for that passing attack. Jamar Chase would catch five-yard slants and be gone. He'd catch a one-yard pass and be gone. He'd moss people. It didn't matter. This secondary has no answer. Joe Mixon is not a factor against this against the interior line of the Chiefs. He's not a factor. He wasn't a factor last time they played. He's not going to be a factor this time they played. The answer, the only answer that the Bengals have is winning in a shootout, which you can do against the Chiefs, but you got to be able to put up that amount of points, obviously, like the like the Bills did, but the Bills, you know, shot themselves in the foot. I'm not upset. I'm a Dolphins fan. I just have to make sure I throw that out there. But that's the only answer the Bengals have. Win a high-scoring game, 45-42 type of game. You're not winning a low-scoring game. It's not it, – the Chiefs are just – better in every aspect coaching offensive line clearly the offensive line of the Bengals is not very good and it's going to show up when Chris Jones eats Joe Burrow alive the only answer is attacking that secondary of the Chiefs that's the only way the Bengals can win they have nothing else no other advantage at all anywhere I don't believe in anything that the Bengals are doing compared to the Chiefs not coaching nothing but you attack that secondary and we saw it last time they played saw what the Bills did that's the only chance you have. But I still don't think that they, they beat the Chiefs. I think it's close, but the Chiefs are just better. And Mahomes is superior talent to Burrow. It's nothing against Burrow, but Mahomes is Mahomes. You know that. I know that. Sure. Who's going to stop Tyreek Hill? Who's going to stop Travis Kelsey? The defense has had a nice year this year for the Bengals. But we saw what happens when Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey get serious. It took 13 seconds. It took 10 seconds. Not 13, took 10 seconds to get in the field goal range. Kick the game time field goal against the number one defense in the league, the Buffalo Bills. What do you think they're going to do against the Bengals? Like in Arrowhead, this isn't in Cincinnati. This is in Arrowhead. Crowd's going to be hostile, playoff. Joe Burrow, he made his comment about how the SEC has had stadiums that are louder than any NFL stadium could ever be. Yeah, you haven't been in Arrowhead. You haven't been in Arrowhead in the playoffs. When you can't hear yourself think, wait until you get there, Mister Confident, Mister, you know, Joe Cool. We'll see what happens. For sure. Let's get. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give you my take on it, and I'm gonna go to the Chiefs since you mentioned it, the Chiefs game. So yeah. I got. I got a man McPherson. He's he clearly the MVP. Got the game ball at the end. I don't know if you saw. I got the two bombs over 50 yards. I put my man Keith McPherson. So I, I, I follow. Uh, 1019 the fan and there's a guy named Keith McPherson I always get him confused with Keith and Evan I know his name's Evan but <laughs> Evan McPherson this guy's a true pro fifth round pick kick is yep. what a steal you know coming out of nowhere just carrying the team here very very what can I say it's like the star of the game for sure and I think if J- Joe Burrow if if he plays well he has to play well here and like you said hostile environment he has to get it done but what they need to do is i don't know if you know joe burrow got sacked nine times this can't be happening that's an nfl record that's an nfl playoff record yes exactly nfl playoff record they have to adjust the line next year they want to be better i don't want him to look like andrew luck andrew luck retired early the Bengals they definitely have to address this right now in the offseason and in the draft, they have to do this. Have to take, they have to do that. And then I think they'll they'll be a legitimate team. They're gonna, I think they're gonna lose to the Chiefs. I think you say you're gonna lose to the Chiefs. So I don't think I don't think they're gonna win. But another thing is, the Titans had such a great regular season team. And Tannehill right here, he wet the bed and he got three interceptions. And you can't do that in the playoffs. That's that's what plus no. in the game too. And then and then McPherson made the field goals that they needed to they got him downfield Joe Burrow got him downfield so he could do that that's what cost him the game unfortunately that's how the cookie crumbles well and and not, not only that but I mean if you're the Bengals you can't settle for field goals against the Chiefs it's just not you're not going to win that way you can't settle for field goals in the playoffs against the Chiefs just not happening and I mean I don't know if you saw the last throw by Ryan Tannehill with 20 seconds left 
Yeah. But that was in triple coverage on third down. You don't throw triple coverage at midfield. Yeah. If you're going to throw that ball, throw it down to the 30 or the 20. Throw a bomb. They pick it off. It's basically a punt. But you throw it to midfield, 20 seconds, two timeouts, Bengals. Guess what's happening? You're not. They're going to kill you. It doesn't matter what quarterback you put in there. You put Trent Dilfer. You put anybody in there. If you give somebody the ball at midfield with two timeouts in 20 seconds and they need 15 to 20 yards, they're going to do that. That you're you're killing your defense by doing that. Why would you throw in the triple coverage on third down? That, that was stupid. He was all by himself and three guys around. Like, of course you're going to get intercepted. And plus, Ryan Tannehill, Tannehill is also to blame on third down. That important drive in the fourth quarter when they had third and one, Julio Jones got stopped in front of the first down line. And instead of handing the ball off to Derrick Henry, who had a wide open hole to get the first down, he decides, oh, yeah, on this read option, I'm going to keep it. I get tackled for a loss of a yard, and now we're going to go for it and hand it off to Derrick Henry, the most predictable play on earth. Everybody knew it. Everybody in the world knew where that ball was going on fourth down. And, of course, they stopped Derrick Henry, who did hesitate. Don't get me wrong. That was – Henry did that. But that, the defensive line of the Bengals was in there before he even blinked. So it, they knew what was coming. Tannehill should have handed the ball from that RPO. Henry had a, a lane, you know, size of a Mack truck, man. Like, that was a first down. So Tannehill is just not very good. They have to move on from Tannehill. They need something better because he's just – he just looks good when Derrick Henry's there. When Derrick Henry's not there, you know, which is not often, but when he was hurt, Tannehill did absolutely nothing. It shows what Tannehill is. He's a product of what Derrick Henry does off the, you know, and he does this off the play action. Got to get a new quarterback in there if financially you can afford it because you're not going anywhere with Ryan Tannehill quarterback. And I'm a Dolphins fan, so I know about Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, I know. I know as well as anybody. He's, I, I, he reminded me of Eli. Like, Eli does that too, like, back in the day. Look. Yeah, five guys on him. He throws it, throws it over there. Like, what are you doing, Tanner? I was like, looking <laughs> like Eli over here. I love Eli, but sometimes the plays he makes, I'm like, come on, Eli, come on. His left-handed throws, of course, yeah. Yeah. All right, Bills Chiefs, clearly the best game. I want to hear your take on it. Yeah, I mean, this to me was the biggest meltdown in NFL playoff history. Um, not because of what happened anywhere before the 13 seconds, but the magnitude of what Josh Allen could not accomplish. And it's not Josh Allen's fault, but Josh Allen is chasing what could be the greatest quarterback of all time, what could be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. And Mahomes clearly isn't going anywhere. Those two are going to be at each other's throats for the rest of their careers, right? Unless one goes elsewhere, which no. Unless we have crystal ball, we don't know if that's happening. But as of right now, Josh Allen knows he's going to have to beat Patrick Holmes eventually in the postseason. Regular season doesn't matter. He's got to beat him in the postseason. He didn't do it before. This was the best chance. This was the best game he's ever played, the best opportunity he's ever going to have, and he didn't win. And you have to think, if you're Josh Allen, what more could I do? What more can I do to beat Patrick Mahomes? Because we beat him for... 59 minutes and 47 seconds. We had him, but guess what? There's still 13 seconds left. And instead of kicking a squib kick or the ball to the five yard line or 10 yard line, you decide to kick it out of the end zone. If you kick it to the five or the 10, by the time your guys return it, the chiefs, which they would have to, you can't call fair catch on the five yard line. By the time you return that ball, get to the 25, which was where the kickoff would have been anyway, off a touchback. You burn three seconds. Guess what? If you have 10 seconds of your Patrick Mahomes, you're not as confident in that Tyree kill play. Because if you do that Tyree kill and Travis Kelsey play, the clock runs out. So if you squib it, Patrick Mahomes has no chance but to but to do the Miami miracle where you're, you know, you get the hook and ladder or some crazy thing like that. Like that's the only chance you have. Or, you know, the the Music City miracle, like the Titans did against these same Bills. Like if you kick it off short of the end zone, you win the game. There's no chance of Patrick Mahomes creating magic. Oh, but not only that, you decide to play back. Let Tyree Kill catch the ball. 
and just run up field. The fastest guy in the NFL. Just you give him a free lane. Like, congratulations. Not only that, but then you give Travis Kelsey the seam. You don't cover him before the drive. Leslie Frazier should have said the only job you guys have to do is to bracket Tyreek Hill to bracket Char- Travis Kelsey. Miko Hardman, Marks Robinson, anybody else on that field can beat us except Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. Because if you get make anybody else beat you, the Chiefs aren't coming back. That, those were the only weapons the Chiefs had that could legitimately pull off a miracle like that. And they went to them, and it was like the Bills were shocked. It was like, oh, surprise, you went to Tyreek Kill and Travis Kelsey. Like, well, what did you think they were going to do? Go to Miko Hardman? Like, I don't understand what the Bills were thinking on the kickoff or the two plays. Like, and then you're shocked, and then you're upset because the overtime rules, like, get out of here. Like, you blew this yourself. And you're never going to have a better chance to beat Patrick Mahomes unless he's unless you're not playing him, unless somebody else upends him. You're never this isn't this is like the Cowboys. Like this is the best team the Cowboys have had since they won the Super Bowl in the 90s, their last Super Bowl. You're not going to like rosters like that don't come along every day. And you blew the chance like the NFL. I mean, you're in one year and out, you're out the next. So I don't know. Brian Dable is going to be going too for the Bills. Like think about that. Josh Allen doesn't have him. So what are the bills next year? Dolphins have $77 million to spend in free agency. I know I'm going on and on, but this might have been the best chance Josh Allen ever has in the Bills uniform to win a Super Bowl. Of course. Brian Dave looks like he's going to come to my team, the Giants. So if I like Brian Flores better. So if we get Brian Flores, but to get my take on this, third, like you said, 13 seconds. How do you lose the game with 13 seconds left? Come on. How do you do that? You have to, you have, <laughs> you leave Travis Kelsey right open in the middle of the field. How does that, how does that happen? How does that happen? You have to be all in on the defense. It's only 13 seconds. You have the game right there. And you this lose it. Number one rated, number one rated defense in the NFL. And you have no idea how to play defense for two plays. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get it. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I, I picked the Bills too. I was like, Bills all the way, Super Bowl. That's how I picked. That was my prediction. I said Josh Allen's going to have a big game. And Gabriel Davis is looking like Jerry Reese out there. Four <laughs> touchdowns, carrying the team. I was like, oh, this is it's over right now. Well, of course, he turned it up, and he said, I don't know if it's over. And then I was like, this is the true New- – I told my friend Graham, this is the true New York team. They're going to win. They're going to pull, pull it together. But it just didn't come out the way I wanted to. It's the Bills, man. I mean, just like their four Super Bowls, they lost in their own in the 90s. It's- the Bills are cursed. It's something about this team. They just don't matter if you have Josh Allen or Stephon Diggs. Doesn't matter. Like the Bills until until they do what the Red Sox did and break that curse. It's just you're stuck with that. That that is forever on your resume. All right. Let's talk about the last game here. The Rams and Bucks. And I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna tell you my Super Bowl prediction and tell me yours. And go with the quick fire, everybody's round, everybody's favorite. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. Rams, Bucks, give me your take. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't think this would be a game going into it, only because the Bucks don't have a B, didn't have a B past tense because this game's over. They didn't have a B, they didn't have Chris Godwin, they didn't have Tristan Wirfs. Like, this team was so banged up. You're asking a 44, 45-year-old Tom Brady to carry you when his team's banged up. I didn't think they beat the Rams anyway. The Rams stomped them earlier in the year. And, you know, choking the ball up four times aside for the Rams, the Rams are a superior team. I mean, they're just better talent-wise. They're just better all the way around. I like Sean McVay more than I like Bruce Arians. And I didn't think this would be a game. Now, obviously, the Rams shot themselves in the foot more than the more than the Bucks, you know, came back. This is more about just coughing up the ball, the center snapping it over Stafford's head, not Stafford's fault. Um, you know, Jalen Ramsey falling down and Mike Evans getting that touchdown. Like this was more about the Rams just coughing it up, just like they did against the Niners. But you know, you learn from your mistakes, and hopefully, if the Rams get in that situation against the Niners, hopefully they hold on to the lead. But I just didn't think this would be a game. And clearly it wasn't 27 to three until the Rams just got in their own way. 
So, yeah, sloppiness leads to mistakes and pulls them to come back. You can't do that against Brady, the GOAT. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. But a lot of turnovers. The cup lost, lose the ball, fumble. Like you said, the snap over, head of Stafford turns over. The Acres lost ball. Games like that, you should lose. Like, I'm like, the Rams don't deserve this. They should lose this game. And I picked the Rams. I like the Rams. Yeah. I like Stafford. I like what he's doing. Like winning is like first ever playoff win two weeks ago. Now, now he's going to take his team to the to championship game, that NFC championship game. I like Odell, but you can't, you can't, you don't deserve to win this if you make these costly turnovers. But they prevailed, and Matt Gay had the field guy at the end. It's a great game, but it wasn't really my favorite game because of the turnovers. Very sloppy turnovers, especially in the playoffs. It's like I was watching. The Giants and Jets over here. It's very unfortunate that this stuff. Yeah, you, your Giants fans are uh, your Giants fans are cursed. Aside from them two Super Bowls, it's been a lot of uh, heartache for you guys. My two co-hosts are Giants fans, so I hear about the Giants all the time. My other co-host is an Eagles fan, so I hear about the the NFC East all the time, or NFC East, whatever you want to call it. That's awesome. All right. <laughs> What's your Super Bowl take? Who do you want in the Super Bowl? Who do you want and who do you think is going to win? Well, I think the Rams, as I mentioned. I mean, the Rams are just superior in talent. Um, they're superior against Bucks, superior against the Niners the last time, and they just coughed up both leads. But they're just superior, and I think the Chiefs win. Again, they're superior in talent. There's a reason those two teams are where they're at. I think it's been a nice year for the Niners and the Bengals, but um, eventually these magical runs end at some point. And eventually a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo has to make a throw. I just don't believe in him. I don't believe he can do it. Um, he's got great weapons, but eventually you're going to have to challenge that defense downfield. I don't think that he's capable of it. I love Debo, but I don't think Debo now receiving course capable of stretching the field when it comes to Vertically, I mean, they can catch the ball, screen passes and things like that. Just, I just don't see it happening. And, um, you know, with the Bengals, like I said, it's been a nice year. I think they've overachieved a little bit. I think they come back down to earth a little bit next year. But it's been a nice year for the Bengals. And uh, I think this is where it ends. So it's going to be Chiefs Rams. We're going to get a rematch of that that suit that uh, Monday night football game between Mahomes and the, and the Rams from a couple years ago, that classic. A day on Monday Night Football. We're going to get a rematch, but with Stafford in here instead of uh, Jared Goff. And I agree. I was about to say the same thing. Rams, Chiefs, I don't trust Jimmy Garoppolo in the big spot. I don't think he's going to play well, especially Joe Burrow. Like, you play against the Chiefs, like you said, go in that atmosphere. You can't get field goals to win. You need touchdowns. You need big plays. I don't think they're going to do that. And especially getting sacked nine times, I don't – I wouldn't be surprised if he gets sacked 10 times, 11 times. The offensive line, they have to address that. So I got to go. And you, sh- you should know who that defensive coordinator is in Kansas City, too, right? You know who their defensive right. coordinator is, right? Yeah. Steve Spagnuolo. Sure you're very fam- yeah, Spag. He won you two Super Bowls against Tom Brady. So I, I think he knows a thing or two about uh, shutting down hot shot quarterbacks. Of course, for sure. And I'm going to. Give you my score. We did, we, did, we did the scores last week. I'll give you my score, and then it'll go yours. For the right. Chiefs Bengals, I'm going to say 35 17. It's going to be kind of a blowout game. I, I, I think Mahomes going to go crazy. It's going to light up the scoreboard 35 17. And for the Rams 49ers, uh, I'm going to go with Rams 28. Uh, 49ers 21. It's going to be a little close, but I think the Rams are going to prevail. Odell, my man from the Giants, going to have a big game, I feel like. And uh, from there, you got to give me your score now. Yeah, I think 38-35 Chiefs in this one. I think uh, Butker comes through late for the Chiefs in a, in a wild game. I think it's going to be another great game like the Bills game. Not as crazy of an ending, but uh, I think the Chiefs and Butker – Walk it off with a with a field goal, win 38-35. And on the other side, I think 31 to 13, the Rams win. I think they get up big, maybe like 28 to 28 to 10, and, and just they just roll. And, and I just don't think I just don't think the Niners are good enough 
to keep up with the Rams. And, and it'll show, and it'll be Rams and Chiefs in the Super Bowl. That's my prediction. First. All right. You ready? Everyone's favorite rounds here. So we're going to do the quick fire round, and we're going to wrap it off with some final thoughts. You sure. ready? Yeah. All right. We're going to go start off everybody's favorite. As you see it up at the end, I'm going to, I'm going to make, throw it out different here. Make it different over here. Okay. Who's your celebrity crush? Oh, man. Is my wife watching? <laughs> uh, it has to be. I mean, if I have to choose without getting in trouble, feet to the fire, uh, it'd have to be Anna Kendrick. I mean, she's just she's adorable, right? She's adorable. She, you know, a nice kid. Great. She's great in movies. Great singer. Yeah, she'd be a great pick. Nice. Favorite cereal. Oh, man. I mean, there's so many great cereals out there making me choose just one cereal. I mean, I really been digging the uh, Reese's Puffs cereal. It's been it's just great. It's, it's a top top of the line cereal. And uh, I mean, you also nice nomination. You can't go wrong with Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles are fantastic and Cocoa Pebbles and life. Life is a nice Nice cereal, too, on the side right there. Nice midnight snack. But I'm going to have to go Reese's Puffs over my top. <laughs> a good one. All right. I got a lot. I got a lot. I, You know, I had a laundry list. Okay. Favorite ice cream and what would you put on it? What topic? And I mean, this is the same thing as cereal. There, there's a lot of great ones out there. I, I really like, uh, I really like, I like, well, I like peanut butter, chocolate, ice cream i mean it's just great then i drizzle a little bit of chocolate sauce on it and uh it's just fantastic i mean i love basically all ice cream but i guess i would have to go chocolate peanut butter um i don't know if there's any specific name there's a million chocolate peanut butters but chocolate peanut butter ice cream is just fantastic but i absolutely love ice cream in general just great a love it top top of the notch top notch fantastic that's for sure all right. Who's your favorite athlete of all time? I mean, obviously, I love Dwayne Wade. I love Dan Marino. I got to meet Dan Marino at the Hall of Fame this, this past August. So that was really cool. Got to take some pictures with Dan Marino. Um, I mean, it have to be Dan Marino, right? I mean, he's he the reason I'm a Dolphins fan. And uh, that's that's got to be my guy is Dan Marino. Yeah. Yeah. Marino, Wade is right there. I loved Wade in Miami even before – before we drafted him, I was I was all in on Wade, hoping we would get him, and we got him. I loved him from day one, so I got to go Dan Marino. Awesome. Are you a LeBron fan, though, or no? Oh, gosh, no. No. <laughs> no. no, no. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't do the crybaby thing. I don't I do not do the whiny thing. I, I, I like athletes that are tough, not, not fake tough, not fake guy tough. For sure. All right, favorite team of all time? Oh, I mean – of course, Miami Dolphins. That's my team. I bleed black and orange up here for Baltimore, my Orioles, and I uh, love my Dolphins down there, and obviously love my Canes. I love all my teams, you know. And whatever season it's in, I'm like in that mode. But I think Dolphins would be the first one where I'm like, okay, let's see a championship out of that. But I've had my fair share of heartbreak with all my teams, so you know, I'm just happy with the championship, whoever I get. Favorite TV show? Oh, Scrubs. I mean, Scrubs is fantastic. That's my show. I, I have been binging Seinfeld a lot lately. Absolutely. Me too. Became, that, I, I used to hate it when I was a child. And then I grew up and I learned to appreciate the comedy in it because I'm a comedy guy. Learned to appreciate the humor in it and their delivery and things like that. But Scrubs is my favorite. I got to interview the creator of Scrubs a couple of years ago on my show. Um, he's a really nice guy, Bill Lawrence. He's really cool. He's actually a Dolphins fan too. That's how I uh, ended up getting him on the show. So Scrubs is my favorite show, but I'm a, I'm a comedy guy, sitcom guy. Love my, uh, love my comedy. Yeah. I just finished. I just got to the episode where uh, George Steinbrenner goes to the Costanza house. Right. Costanza's <laughs> like, what did you change Jay Buna for? <laughs> I love that one. So that was that was great to see. It was like, man, my baseball people love Ken Phelps. They love Ken, Ken Phelps fat. They love Ken Phelps fat. Uh, I'm on like my so third cool. time through the series. I think I'm almost yeah. I just finished my third time through the series. Awesome. Favorite, <laughs> favorite movie. 
Ah, oh, man. Um, I mean, if I'm going comedy, I have to be Anchorman. I'm a big Will Ferrell guy. Love right. me, Will Ferrell. But uh, if I'm going non-comedy, I'd have to go Inception. I uh, love the idea of Inception. It's absolutely fantastic. A dream inside of a dream. It's just, if you've seen it, have you seen Inception? No, I haven't. Okay, you need to watch Inception. If if you're willing to have your mind twisted, your mind you know, is going to be bent when you watch it, I mean, you're going to be questioning reality and things like that as Matt Damon is a star. And um, it's just, it's it's a mind twist. I'll put it uh, with a PC type of word, but it's a mind twist of a movie. But that's my favorite non-comedy. Then Anchorman's my comedy movie. I love Anchorman. Nice. Okay, and wrap off the, the question that's my personal favorite. What's your favorite commercial? Commercial? Yeah. I, you know, don't, I mean, back, like, all time or just current? All time. All time. Okay. All right. I mean, there was, uh, I did love the Real Men of Genius commercials. They were fantastic. Like, I love the Coors Light commercials with the, um, uh, where they would like show the uh, Coors Light girls and, and football. And it's like, I love eating dirt. I love burritos at 4 a.m. I love dogs that love cats and twins. Like, have you ever seen that commercial? The Coors Light commercials, course, like when course. you used to watch football and stuff. Yeah. Those are my favorite. I absolutely love them. I miss them. Uh, those, I would probably go with those. I absolutely love them. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah, those are one of, good, those are one of my favorite commercials as well. Anything to wrap off with? Uh, no, I mean, I, uh, I'm just, I'm hoping that these Niners and these Bengals lose so that way I can be right. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll be at, I'll be in LA for the Super Bowl, So I'm excited for that. And I, uh, hopefully I get to talk to some of these cats. That's awesome. So where could people find you? Oh uh, yeah. You can find blue Hawks 13 on Twitter. Um, always happy to chat. You can find me uh sideline sports network Tuesday nights, 8 30 Eastern time sports arena, which is on sideline sports network Monday and Wednesday, 10 Eastern time. We have an assortment of shows that we do. Um, and if Alex Fleming's NFL carousel Thursday nights, it's set from seven to eight during the NFL regular season. Uh, we can find me DBNA television with Dave Bruner, who's a sports agent. He hosts, he is the owner of the network, but our show is on there. You can also find us on Quantum Star, which is on Roku. You can find us on there. And, uh, I mean, I'm just everywhere. I, I'm a freelance writer for Fox Sports 1340 AM Hopewell over here near Virginia. I write for Inscriber Magazine, Sideline Sports section, right for that. Um, I, I wrote for Fan Sided as well. So I'm just kind of everywhere, man. I mean, this is my life. This is my passion, sports and uh, doing the media stuff. Since I can't be a professional athlete, this is my life. I love it. Yeah, John, keep killing it, man. Doing a great job. Make sure you follow John, all the social media patterns, his websites and be in the description. So make sure you check out his podcast and doing a great job over there. And, thank you uh, for having me. Thank you very much. I appreciate the, uh, the time. Thank you for letting me come on your show and uh, get to talk on your show i really appreciate it and uh you know anytime you want me back just hit me up you know you know where to find me thank you thank you again i really appreciate it you too man thank you i appreciate it and uh we'll see you in a splash